This is the Mariah Report. News, pop culture, and all things Mariah Carey. Welcome back. I'm Martin Burgess. And I'm Dan Enriquez. This is our final uh, bi-coastal episode for now. I'm heading back to LA soon. So we're going to be coming back. reunited next week. Absolutely. It'll be fun. Fun, fun, fun times here in the California sun. Absolutely. Actually, I can't believe I was in New York when Mariah got inducted last night I into know, the Songwriter Hall of Fame. You did not attend the event because it was sort of pricey, but on this podcast, <laughs> Sort of pricey? <laughs> sort of pricey. Um, uh, we have someone who actually attended the event, another fellow lamb, Stephen, and he is going to join us a little later and tell us about all the festivities. Yeah, we're getting a first-hand account of the, of, uh, the evening, so stay yes. tuned for that coming up. Uh, we also have a couple of more things to catch up on. The NFT was sold. Someone bought the experience and the boarding pass. So, <laughs> you know, congratulations to them. But also, we actually we are going to figure out on this show what the hell an NFT is. We will figure it out one day. We are going to do it. We, with the we help will. of fellow Lamely, we are going to yes. figure out what, the, what an NFT is. That's for we're sure. getting closer. We're getting closer. Eventually, we're going to all invest and we're going to all be rich. Soon. Yes, yes. Although I did just recently see a headline or something where Bill Gates um, said that the whole uh, cryptocurrency thing is a big sham. <laughs> so oh. I'm like, all right, not that I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know, but that's what he said. <laughs> well, if he says it, it must be sus. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he's he knows money, so he's he, the computer he guy, right? Money. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Uh, okay, what's Mariah been up? Let's catch up on the Mariah news. It's been you know ex- exciting week. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, again, Mariah's sort of been laying low, and she, she hasn't come out uh, up until the Songwriter Hall of Fame. But she did the day of the Hall of Fame. She did post a bunch of Instagram stories mm-hmm. about her. What did she say? She wrote a beautiful little note, and um, you know, just celebrating her induction. And then she posted little clips of one favorite song from each album with the lyrics and everything and i was like oh and you know she did it throughout the day slowly and i was like oh i can't wait to see what she picks for charm bracelet or you know what i mean or e equals mc squared or caution you know i know i know so what did you think about the choices i mean i think i liked them all what was there any that i didn't like i would i would just wish for the caution i wish she would have picked um eighth grade over with you Without you, what's no, cool? uh, with you? Uh, dis- she did, I, she did the distance. Oh, no, did the distance, didn't she? She did that. <laughs> she didn't pick that. <laughs> I think she did the distance for that one. Or did she? You're right. Now, now you got I me questioning, did- girl. <laughs> Maybe I saw with you floating around somewhere else. <laughs> um, no, but she. Well, the, here's the thing: she didn't pick our favorite, which is, I know um, that. So. You know, whatever. Um, but I love that she picked for Charm Bracelet, what, My Saving Grace. That's a good one. What did she I pick for Rainbow? Cry Baby. Oh, Cry Baby. That's a good one. That's a good one. That was a good choice. But I would have liked to maybe Petals, personally. Or, mm, or I was thinking she was going to do Can't Take That Away. That's a good one, too. I, you know, because it's her theme. Yes. But it it is Mariah's theme. Yes. <laughs> it is. But she picked Cry Baby. Um, and then, uh, she picked my song, make it happen for emotions. So was That's a good one. That. That's a good one. Um, but yeah, so that was a cute little moment to see like what she was going to post. Cause I was, you know, keeping track. What did you think about moment. her picking vanishing as the first album? Oh, I mean, that's a given. Absolutely. That's, that's the hidden gem on that album that, you know, the general public does not know, but they should. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely. I loved it. What about side effects for MC Squared? Oh, that's my that's my jam. So I'm really? I'm good with that too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honestly, though, the lyrics in that song run real deep. They do. The way, I mean, that song is just brilliant. I love that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I thought that could have been really good as a single. I mean, forget bye bye. I want side effects. Uh, see, I like for the record. That would have been cute if she picked that because it has like other lyrics, like lyrics mm-hmm, and lyrics. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love that song too. You know what? I might have to go back to the Eagles MC Square because that's a good album. It's a vibe. It's a whole vibe. Yeah, she got the chick. That ch- I'm that chick. She mm-hmm. yeah. I'll be loving love a long story. Time. So, oh, see, I don't. I'm not really down with the ballads on that song. I mean, love story's oh, cute. I love love story. I, I mean, 
it's cute. Okay, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, when I'm in my love story moments, I'm jamming. But it's, I'm, <laughs> for that album in particular, I love all the more upbeats. You know, I'm here for the I'll be loving you a long time, the OOCs, all that. I'm down. Oh, I wish you well has some good lyrics in that too. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. That's that's very lyricy. It I love is. Lyric. <laughs> it's very <laughs> lyricy. <laughs> Um, um okay so, but anyways uh so last week we were talking about the nfts and you know we we love the lamely out there because we had over there on our youtube channel one of our viewers lamb was mm-hmm. breaking down what the nfts are and what fungible is and what has been funged what can be funged what isn't funging <laughs> and i have to say it was it was a good schooling like I learned something. I still might not know everything, but I feel like yes. I learned something. I don't know what I learned, but I learned something. So we want to share that with everybody. <laughs> yes. Well, I feel like this. So I'm going to read out the explanation of fungibility, the the F. But I feel like we still need to figure out what the T is and what the N is and what the blockchain is. There's still a lot of questions. There's still yes, but we, <laughs> we slow know. steps, small steps, small yes, steps. Yes, one at a time, baby, one at a time. <laughs> Okay, so this was from our YouTube page. Make sure you please head over there and uh, follow us, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, because that helps the show grow as well. Um, and so this is from Tangled55, is their code name. And they said, hey, Dan and Martin, I have a little background here. So I'll try and share and make it pretty simple. So I guess a little background in uh, the NFTs. Yes. So no fungibility, sun- yes. So fungibility is a noun. Fungible, the adjective, just refers to the equivalence of one commodity compared to the other at the exact same time and place. (sighs) Money is fungible. (laughs) Money is fungible. Money is fungible. Okay. But an NFT is not fungible. It's a non-fungible. You cannot fung it. Okay. No, but you can fung money. Which is tracking to me because I had no idea that you could do that. Same. But I guess that's what we were sort of saying, you know, the markets, how they change or they, you know, the dollar compared to another dollar is like different. Right. No, right. I think. Okay. Wait, wait let's Continue. read this. Hang on. <laughs> Start again. Just fungibility just refers to the equivalence of one commodity compared to the other at the exact same time and place. <laughs> okay. All right. Now time is becoming a part of factor in this. Okay. I think this is <laughs> actually getting more complicated. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> We're going to okay. get through this. <laughs> Money is fungible. For example, a US $5 bill is said to be the fun is said to be fungible because it, it is equivalent to any other banknote like a euro. Okay. Equivalent to the $5 bill at anywhere in the world at any other time at a concurrent market rate. It doesn't uh, even okay. have to be cross currency. $5 bill is equivalent to five $1 American bills. Perfectly fungible. Okay. So a five, okay. So $5, five single dollar bills is fungible. Yes. To a five dollar bill, I guess. Is that that's fungy? Is that what that means? I think so. so. That's funged. That's fungible money. Okay, so it's it's com- you can compare it to something of equal value. I guess. I I think <laughs> I think I think that's it. I mean, I still don't know what any of that means or why you would need to do that. But okay, I I feel like I I, I sort of understand that. But I'm confused because now five. American dollars is not the same as five euros. Right, but it's fungible because... Now, listen to me. Listen to me here. (laughs) (laughs) It's fungible because you... It doesn't have to be the... Just because it's comparable. Yeah, or it could... There is a possibility that it could be comparable. Okay. Okay, don't listen to me. (laughs) <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Actually, erase all of that. I have no idea what I'm talking about. On the other hand, 
an emerald, the gemstone, for example, isn't perfectly fungible. It's non-fungible. An emerald is very rare. Firstly, and given how much they differ based on varying dimensions, size, shape, cut, etc., it is hard to find two of them at the exact same value. So, uh, so an emerald is or is not fungible? It it's is non-fungible. Because you cannot find something at the same value. value. Okay. Got it? Okay. I think I got that. So let's bring the boarding pass into this. Yes. Okay. So the boarding pass is it's not fungible because you cannot find something that's equal value. But I feel like you can't. You can. Because a I think well, how, much did, how much did it go for um, in the Geo Jam? I think like sixty-five or seventy thousand something dollars. Like that. Yes. So you can't you find something that is of that value, and then it is funged alongside that thing that is of the same value. But it says non-fungible. It's the only one in the world like it. Like the gemstone. Oh, I guess because there isn't one just like it, it's non-fungible. Whereas money is fungible because there's other ones around, other banknotes around. Right, or maybe and like you can houses. make it. Like, oh, oh, oh this, okay. <clears throat> this house like, is comparable to this house or something or a car. No, no, I think I'm getting it. Is that okay? Okay, so the boarding pass we cannot c- compile um, other boarding passes to make it make the same one of the same value so like a five dollar bill unlike a five dollar bill we can get the single dollars five single dollars and it'll be the same value it's fungible okay okay well you can't do that with the boarding pass we can't recreate it but i feel like somebody could recreate that if they really wanted to well that's that's where the question mark lies that's that's (laughs) where is this a sham or is it a sham (laughs) (laughs) yeah I feel like a good old Photoshop moment and voila, you got a boarding pass. Yeah, I, I mean, right. So I still, I guess I still don't understand at that aspect of it, but I, I have a better understanding of what funge, funging is. Right. What um, can be funged. Yes. Yes. I, I, I feel like maybe I, I know. Okay. Let's continue. Yes, please, please. Okay. Even two used cars are commodities that are non-fungible. A uh-huh. two owner, a two owner, twenty eighteen Toyota Corolla with thirty five thousand eighty five thousand miles, and a single owner, two thousand and fifteen BMW with one hundred and fifteen thousand miles, are not fungible in value, since even though they are both used cars of today, they won't. They wouldn't be equivalent at the agreed upon market rate in value due to wear and tear of the compared vehicles. Okay. But you would never, you would never, now this is what's confusing to me. Why would you ever compare those two cars because they're so different? Right? <sighs> Commodities I mean, are non fungible. That's why it's not fungible, because you can't compare them, right? But I think you can't get two Toyota Corollas to make one BMW. Oh, is, oh, is that? Okay. Okay. I, is that what okay. it means? I think that's what it means. I think that's what it means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With some mileage on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Like, they're just not going to... Um... Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> so, with <laughs> fungibility... Bring it on home. It on yes. home. <laughs> so, with fungibility... Think always of equivalence. Either two commodities can be the same based on value, fungibility, or they cannot. Non-fungibility. So, so okay. So, two homes can be fungible because you can't... If they're the same value. If they are of the same sort of value and overall uh, same characteristics. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, okay. Okay. All right. You know? <laughs> All right. But I guess if like one's burnt down, it's not the same. It's sponged. Not funged. Well, that's, well, the funging has, yes, yeah, been done if it's burnt. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Uh, okay. But anyways, I feel like I do have a better understanding of what that word means. Yes. And it, like he just said, um, you know, it's, it's comp- comparable of value. Right. So now we have now. So now that we have that, okay, let's talk about non-fungible token. A non-fungible token is an instrument of financial value containing digital data that is stored in a blockchain. Blockchains can get kind of complicated, but think of a blockchain as a database, but not a database in a conventional sense. Um, like where you have tables of information, like a table of customer IDs and addresses, da, 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 but a database that is append only, which means the data, the data are stored in blocks or with various capacity sizes, but only side by side with temporary or a time structure. I uh, see now I'm lost. Well, now that's lost twos, but, but okay, maybe I'm trying to break this down. So is a blockchain basically the bank for a database currency? And once, no. it, once it's been chained, once, it, once you've added that link to the chain of the block, you cannot change it. You can only continue to add to it. You can't subtract from it. Oh, maybe. Maybe. So like once that blockchain is placed girl you got us over here doing the uh nft report today (laughs) (laughs) we're trying i don't know this is it's just it's very um i I don't know it's very sort of uncon it's very confusing it is but we need to get to the bottom of it because you know mariah's going to be trying to sell us something on it soon oh you know it we're going to figure out what we're buying and how to buy it and where to store it and we'll, yeah, and then how do you? I sell it because I don't want it because I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fund it, find a comp- something of equal yes. value. Well, well, maybe that's the thing. Well, then if it's non fungible, can you you can sell it then? Because it's not fungible. So how who's to say what it what it's worth? What it's <sighs> worth? What its value is? Because you and know again, everybody's it, buying up that monkey, the angry monkey, or whatever. Oh, see, when I did some research on it, I heard something about a monkey, but I'm not quite sure what all that means. People are buying up this cartoon. I don't understand that. I don't know either. What do you do with it? The only thing is, when it comes to Mariah and her boarding pass, you know, at least the winner of it was able to have an experience. You know what I mean? And I think that, I guess, is, is really what you're... In, for this particular instance, what you're looking for, because there was a winner. They, they, uh, there were two um, gentlemen who won, and they got on that plane, and the plane looked real cute, really nice, looked really good. Oh, it, yes, luxury, honey, luxury. Yes, yes, that's the GeoJam money right there. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like they had a fabulous time on the flight with Mariah, and they took pictures, and there was rainbow. And there were, you know, all kinds of festive things going on. I want to know now what they ate. I know. How long was the flight too? Do you think it's like an hour from Atlanta private? Two hours? I would say maybe two hours. Or less. Isn't it quick? Yeah, probably. To Atlanta? But either way, I mean, I'm sure they were sipping on some Black Irish. They looked fabulous. Everybody looked great. Yes, it looked like like a great time. Yes, yes. And that... I, I now can you fund an experience like that? No, because that is priceless. Non fungible. It's not. That's why it's non fungible because you can never have that moment again. No. So that is definitely non fungible. They had a non fungible experience with Mariah. <laughs> that's what they had. And the boarding pass is the token, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's just like your receipt or something. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? So either way, but anyways. <laughs> Okay, so to round it out, so NFT is a digital asset representing real-world objects, art, music, videos, stored in a blockchain that are usually bought and sold with cryptocurrency, a fungible form of currency. Crypto is fungible. Okay, all right. The NFT is not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like um, I feel I don't understand how these people who do know these things 
actually learned these things? Like, where do you get all, like, do you take a class? Do they teach this? And is this what they're teaching in the middle schools now? And that's why all these kids can like open their phones and do a million things instantly. They teach these things in high school. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know. Uh, It still does not answer the question. Yeah. But here's the question that needs to be answered. Let's pretend we bought the boarding pass. We won the trip. We did. You and I did the experience. We have the possession of the boarding pass. Do we just save it to the desktop? And look at it whenever we want. Like, what do you do with it? I think that's Where all you can do with that. There's you just download it and click do. on it and go, oh, look, here's my body pass. Yeah. Or like if you buy one of the monkeys, you just look at it on your computer screen. That's it. And I don't understand that. I just don't understand. Is there like a special software that you have to like download and then you look at it in there? No, because what's the difference? But then if I download it, what's stopping me f- from just, um, you know, sending it to you, sending it to everybody? Exactly. A copy like of it. All the, Mar- all the pictures of Mariah that I just, you know, steal from online. I just yes, click maybe your hard- save. Maybe, maybe, click maybe and blockchain. Save. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> download, click, save to roll. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe that's, maybe your hard drive is the blockchain. <laughs> you just store oh, everything in okay. that. Okay, maybe, maybe it's the database. Yes. Right? So I mean, maybe you maybe you can't click and save an NFT, oh. but you can because no because I got the I I I have you a got picture of it. It's done. <laughs> so again, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> I, I, we're gonna learn as we go, but I feel like I I can I, I have a, a understanding of fungibility. Right. That's that's what I got out of that, and I appreciate we'll it. We'll get there. But, We're going to be um, investors soon. Once people can answer yeah. the questions. <laughs> once Mariah releases one of these albums over there as an NFT, then we're all going to have to learn about it. But um, no, fingers crossed. Hopefully that won't happen. But <laughs> See, question number two. What if she did do that? Do we just play it in the Apple and the Spotify? How does it work? What do you play an know. NFT on? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who made who made this up. Who makes? Who made this? Who made these rules? I don't know. I want to get inside their brain because they're crazy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, anyways, uh, that's the enough of the NFT report. We're going to take a quick splash break. We're going to come back with Stephen Wallace and talk about what was happening over there at the Songwriter Hall of Fame. Yes. Stay tuned. Hey listeners, this podcast is made possible by the generous support of our Patreon members. And you can become a Patreon member for as little as $5 a month. Cancel anytime. You'll get exclusive access to bonus content like our after show, where we get into all kinds of other hot topics and fun shenanigans. So if you cannot get enough of us in this show, head over to www.patreon.com slash the Mariah Report and join in the fun today. The link is in the description below. Okay, so we have our special guest with us, Stephen Wallace. He was at the Songwriter Hall of Fame induction ceremony. He experienced the whole thing firsthand, so let's not keep him waiting. Stephen, welcome to the Mariah Report. Hi, guys. Thanks. It was uh, a whirlwind of an experience, to say the least, but, but definitely a once-in-a-lifetime experience also, just to see Mariah, obviously, which is why I was there, but also to uh, see all the amazing artists that have created such amazing lyrics over so many years of all of our lives and just to be able to give them their flowers for what they've done for the world in terms of the music that's lasted for so long so no it was, a, it was an amazing experience it was definitely it blew my mind how incredible it was and the performances there and some surprises that were there as well was just stunning to say the least it sounds pretty amazing. I'm jealous. I want to hear everything, everything, because, <laughs> you know, it's it's to see sort of Mariah in, you know, the presence of her peers and to be, you know, inducted in the Hall of Fame with so many other people and then the performance aspect of it. Yeah, it was, it was, it was tremendous. I mean, it was a beautiful ballroom, you know, um, the food was delicious, uh, 
we sat at a table that was next to actually Neil Gorshin, who used to be the head of the Grammy Museum. Um, little Nas X got an award there. We met and talked with him. Uh, we met rewind, with pause, him. rewind. Talk to me about that moment. <laughs> Wait a minute now. We have to hear all of it. We love little Nas X. Okay. 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 How did you meet him? Well, what do you... Well, what happened was he came, it was hard to miss because he was in platform pink boots and a whole platform, or excuse me, a whole um, pink outfit. So, and he has these really wild, curly, blonde streaks, curly streaks on his hair. So you could barely mm-hmm. see his face. That's his new look. And um, so we went right over to him and one of his big bodyguards was standing there. And he said, can we just say hello? And he said, of course. And he just opened up and had Nas get up and he chatted with us for a while. And when I say we, I was with one of our fellow lambs that's out there on the media, Dee Dee Issa. Um, she and I applauded to go to the Songwriters Hall of Fame back in 2020. But of course, we all know that didn't happen. Um, so nonetheless, we had to wait two, two years, almost two and a half years, and now we're here and actually doing it. So she and I um, had planned on rendezvousing there, never met before, only through the you know, social media chats and such. So it was really great to meet her. And we spent time, you know, obviously at the same table talking and getting to know each other. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, it was one of those things where we definitely just went right over to him and talked. And everybody was very open. I mean, we met Pharrell Williams, same thing, very open talking and chatting. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis got photos with them. They were really so generous and we talked about Prince and we talked about Mariah and the Neptunes and they were just so happy to be there themselves. Um, met and the lovely Michaela Angela Davis who was there and yes, uh, lovely. She, Love she was her. just phenomenal to chat with and just so forthcoming and you know just thrilled to be there to support support Mimi in this way. Well, and, um, let's let's okay. talk a little bit about the performances. Now, Mariah mm-hmm. did not perform, but they had people paying tribute to her. Tell us uh, mm-hmm. who they were and what they sang. Sure. Um, there was a young girl, and I cannot remember her name, but when she first came out, I almost thought, oh, my God, is that um, little, um, Mar- Mar- not Mariah. Monroe. Monroe. I thought Monroe. the same thing, too, when she came out. And they had her, her hair was just like Mariah's from the very first album, just mm-hmm. a little darker, same kind of, you know, black ensemble, um, covering everything up, so to speak. Um, but she sang Hero, she sang All I Want for Christmas, she was a medley of songs. Oh, wow, um, really? She she sang, um, what is the other song? I just it was coming off of such a high here. I can, I can barely remember all the songs. So she did today. a whole a whole medley of Mariah hits. A medley of Mariah hits. She did One Sweet Day, and they had, who was the lead singer from Boys and Men? Wanye. Wanye. Wan, Wan, not Wan. <laughs> Wanye Morris. Yes, Wanye Morris. Thank you. My name is Wanye. Uh, Wanye <laughs> Morris. Yes, I'm oh, sorry about that. I, I'm really... I, I just, in bed at like four o'clock in the morning after this. I know um, because it was, it wasn't, the show was very long and Mariah was sort of at the very tail end oh, of it, right? She was, a, she was the very last inductee, yeah. The, the 33rd inductee of women in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. And they have well over four, maybe 500 members. And they mm-hmm. only have now 33 women. Very sus. Very interesting. Yeah, very um, interesting to say the least. And then they had a gospel singer, and I could not, they didn't, either they didn't announce her or she, or there was, it got kind of noisy, so you couldn't hear what they said. But they had one gospel singer come out, and she did um, Fly Like a Bird. Oh, oh wow. Oh. And then she was joined by Yolanda Adams on that. Really? And then Yolanda Adams did Make It Happen. Really, oh, so this is this is all sounding very fascinating to me because I haven't really seen any of this out there on the internet yet. Yeah. I would love yeah, yeah. to, you know, see and hear well, those I, things. Well, I do have some of this on the on the video, so I just haven't posted this stuff yet because I'm literally here at the airport waiting <laughs> for my flight to go back <laughs> to LA. So this is a scoop for you guys. Yes, um, we appreciate it. 
let's talk a little bit about Mariah. I was yes. about to say that this is the Mariah um, report. So let's get back yeah, to yeah, the yeah. subject at hand. <laughs> so it was it was all that, all that, and then Mariah does come out. She's the very last person. She's introduced by Questlove, and there's definitely mutual admiration of love, love between the two of them. And then she comes out on the side, and she has on this gown, which I've seen some pictures now, and it's actually quite a beautiful kind of silver and black gown with a with a trail a tail. But because she was behind the podium you really couldn't really get the full display of it and she had on long black sheer gloves and on both arms and it kind of reminded me unfortunately it was a day that we would all like to pass in terms of some of that uh, uh, design costume such that she used to have back in the day mm-hmm. and again those days that we would like to forget um, but I think what the issue was, is this was her very first public presentation and being around people since COVID. Yeah. And I think she was really nervous about being around people in this way and having those sheer gloves allowed her to be able to touch things without being consistently self-conscious about it. If she touched it, she, you know, if she catch something or whatever the case uh-huh, may be, that, uh-huh. that was this my thought. Plus, it's also a huge event event for her to be inducted. So, you know, it's mm-hmm. double double whammy for the nerves. Exactly. So, um, in terms of her, she was fun and bubbly, and she was, you know, had these fabulous sunglasses. I think the boys, what is it, the Mariah? Is it Mariah's closet or Mariah Carey closet? Oh yes, yes. They yeah, have, they um, already they already picked up exactly what she was wearing. Yes, from the jewelry to the shoes to everything, they, they are, got it covered. They are, on it, on it. I love but, uh, she, she was playing around with them. She was talking about the lighting being, you know, we're concerned about the lighting and her lighting guy wasn't there. So uh, she was worried about that. She was playing around with this. Like, she was just joking and being her silly self through it. And, um, but I also think that may have been maybe a little bit of maybe nervousness just around the whole situation. And I understand that. I mean, it's, you know, it's been a scary time. And not everybody feels 100% confident about exposing themselves again. So that kind mm-hmm. of makes sense. Yeah. But, um, but she was funny and people were laughing and, you know, she's just being silly self. But she did say some, you know, pretty poignant things relating to songwriters and how there are so few women in, in this and how, you know, while you know, managers and lawyers and such, we they need them and trust them. She was making track of some jokes about, about that how you know sometimes those things are more obstacles than they are helping you she was at least inferring that at a certain point um but for the most part it was just a very simple thing but it didn't seem her script her speech didn't seem scripted i thought for sure that it might be more i don't know serious or self, like yeah. some of the speeches that we've seen in the past when she's really gotten into it um she yeah i sort really of imagined it would be like that variety uh women's event do you remember that one just before the pandemic yeah uh, that, she gave a really good speech i felt like it was going to be along those lines but it's more freestyle yeah, it seems billboard. like or even the billboard you know one to a degree but then again you know this is these were like all her peers um i'm sure she didn't expect nor did we have an opportunity unfortunately to uh see her chat or, or even congratulate her ourselves uh, so i'm sure she didn't even think that any Lamb would actually be in the audience, but hopefully, at least one of the two few people that we saw that are connected to her camp in some way, shape, or form did let her know that we were there. Um, and I'm sure that Dee Dee will be posting stuff on uh, Facebook and such to let everybody know, um, and including Mariah, that we were there. So, you know, hopefully, she wow. just knows that we're there to support her nonetheless. But it really was an amazing event. It, I mean, anyone can ever go to something like that it's uh, amazing but it was obviously extra special because it was a special day for mariah and a very long overdue award for her given what she's done in the music industry i absolutely I agree with that a thank long you. time coming thank you for giving yeah. us all the insight and input on everybody who was there because i didn't even realize that it's basically a room full of legendary people mm-hmm. yeah 
Yes. Other people were there too, apparently. (laughs) Surprisingly (laughs) enough, it wasn't just (laughs) Mariah. But like I said, it's so great to see her in the company of her peers and people who are legendary because she is just as legendary and she deserves all of this. So uh, she she was in good company. She got her she got her flowers last night, and uh, you know I hope it was a, a great experience for her. And uh, I know I know it was a great experience for me, and I'm sure for a lot of people in the audience, they felt the same way. So no, yeah. it, was, it was wonderful. Wow, yeah. well, so happy that you got to experience that too, and you know be um, a witness to all of that. Stephen, you mentioned you're at the oh, airport, yeah. so I know you got to run, you got to catch that plane back to LA. So thanks so much for telling us all the inside scoop, and thanks for joining us on the Mariah Report. Yes, we Anytime. love and appreciate you. Love and appreciate you too. And just keep doing the great things you're doing. You, you know, you you helped us through the pandemic. <laughs> so <laughs> and through, and through some tough years before that. So Ooh. just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Stephen. Bye, Stephen. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks again, Stephen, for joining us. That's such um, that was so exciting to hear, you know, a firsthand account of the event. Exactly. It was a party over there. A party. Yeah. I know. And but also such a long time coming because we've been waiting for this moment for years and years. So can't believe it's over. I know, I know. But it, it was it was a great time for all that attended. And um, that is gonna do it for this episode of the Mariah Report. Sure is. So if you had a good time, please don't forget to hit follow on your favorite podcast app that helps the show grow. And you also get notified about new episodes as they come out. You can also get the after show, maybe a pre-show. We don't know. You know, we mix it up every now and then, but you can go to patreon.com slash the Mariah Report and support the show for as little as five bucks a month. Cancel anytime. That's right. Simple, easy. Boom. There you go. And don't forget, you can also uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel over there on the YouTube. <laughs> a great lyric. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All I right. know. Uh, great vocals. I'm giving vocals today. <laughs> vocals. Anyways, guys, thanks so much. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. The Mariah Report is produced and edited by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Hosted by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Graphics created by Sean Mark. Theme music created by E. Reezy Beats. Thank you to the listeners who support the show on Patreon. If you'd like to show your support or for more information, visit the show notes in your podcast app.